Hi. And one sec, there we go. I should just quickly uh, mention if any of you have shared your link, um, everyone needs to register individually. Okay. So if your link is doubled up, um, you may have access issues. All right, we'll get started in just a few minutes. Please feel free to introduce yourself in the chat. There's a lot of, uh, oh, and Monica says she's here for JoJo. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hey, AJ. Happy Monday. Cynthia, do we have a special guest today? <laughs> she is working from the other office. <laughs> oh. Over here, still, there's that one. Yeah. Like, what? What? All right. So we'll get started in just a few minutes here. Um, if you are not presenting, if I can have you make sure that you are muted. All right, and for those of you that did not receive my email here this morning, um, I just shared our presentation list in the chat. Awesome, and we have a lot of uh, new faces here that are registered, so please introduce yourself in the chat. Oh, and it looks like Charlie's with us too. <laughs> Hi, Charlie. <laughs> I love it. Uh, should we get started, Matt? Morning in progress. Awesome. I think we can get started. Uh, Natalie, if you want to go to the next slide. Awesome. Well, welcome everybody. Uh, I can't even, <laughs> I'm sure you're probably all shocked as I am that we are here yet again. Um, I know that I would love to be in Pittsburgh with all of you having a beer. Um, thanks to our friends at the Shipping Monster who are, who are online here as well. Um, so uh, yeah, so we're here to talk about new traveling exhibits. I'm really, really excited because we have a lot of new and exciting projects that um, our friends here are going to present today. So when it is your turn to speak, just take yourself off of mute and you should be able to have full access to everyone who's on the, the call today. We are gonna be recording it. So we'll be sharing out once we're, um, once we're all done. Uh, next slide. So really quickly, uh, my name is Cynthia Brown. I'm with Museum EXP. I am on the Traveling Exhibits Network board here with um, a bunch of fine people. We have Heather Farnworth with Ontario Science Center. We have AJ Gailey with Lucy Creative. <laughs> Hello, everyone's waving. Um, we have Debbie Donahue with Imagine Exhibitions. Uh, Shane McConnell with Little Ray's Nature Centers and Sarah Myers with the Children's Museum of Indianapolis. And uh, I just wanna mention that um, all of us have put in a ton of work to make this possible as well as all the other ones. Um, we are completely volunteer um, board. So <laughs> thank you so much for being patient with us. We're trying to balance all of the things that we're doing um, just like you guys. And um, we're really happy to be, uh, to be helping out. 
Um, okay, next slide. Awesome. So um, I'm sure you guys have been having some of the same conversations that we have, um, which is what do traveling exhibitions look like beyond uh, COVID-19 and what do they look like, you know, as we look beyond um, 2021. And so just to kick things off, I'd love to do a couple of polls here. Um, first off, who is planning on and budgeting to actually host an exhibition here in 2022? And if you were not a venue, um, if you can just hit NA, that would be great. Awesome, we'll just give it a couple more minutes. If you are not seeing the question, it should be um, as a pop-up here. And yes, if you are not presenting, please mute yourself. <laughs> Great. All right. So sharing results here. Um, so we have uh, 56 people um, are planning on hosting or leasing and traveling exhibition in 2022. Um, 12 folks are not. Um, we'll look at the data afterwards and see um, what that looks like if it's all or if it's different organizations. All right, so then uh, next poll, who is planning and budgeting to host a traveling exhibition in 2023? Give it a couple more seconds. All right, it looks like 53 folks are planning on hosting a traveling exhibition in 2023. And we only have six that are not planning on hosting or leasing a traveling exhibition. That's great. And last but not least, of all of the things that we saw in um, coming out of the pandemic, what are some of the trends that you would like to see stick? And you can click as many of those as you'd like. <laughs> Great. And as you guys are finishing up this last question, um, we're going to be sending a follow up survey after this. Um, we are presenting. Um, in a session on Thursday um, in conjunction with the exhibition or with the, um, with the conference. And so we'd love to have your participation as we look at all of this. Um, okay, so COVID-19 trends um, that we would like to see stick around in the future. It looks like number one, interesting collaborations. Uh, number two, thorough cleaning protocols. <laughs> That's great. And then gesture technology is also in the top. That's great. All right, uh, next slide, Natalie. Awesome, so just to plug um, our session that we have going on on Thursday, Traveling Exhibitions 2021 and Beyond, um, we'd love to look at a few more data sets just to see how we compare with um, some of the surveys that we've done over the past couple of years and looking at what things look like in the future. So if you are attending as tech, we'd love to have you join. Um, if you're not attending, we will still be sure to share out those data sets. So next slide, I'm gonna turn it over here to Mac. No, here comes the other side of the group that's sponsoring this, uh, <clears throat> this round table. Uh, we're really pleased to be part of the, the group and to be doing this. I, should have counted the number of years, but I won't. And uh, uh, Kobe is here with voice only today. Uh, she's home with her new baby and uh, things are going well at that end. But I think we can uh, just move very quickly in, into uh, the presentations. 
And uh, Debbie, uh, you're, well, no, let me just make, make a, a, co a comment first that uh, you'll recall that uh, you were asked to not exceed two minutes and uh, the dinger that is sitting here beside me will tell you when you have exceeded the two minutes. So please keep track of the time so that we can be efficient and get all the way through this list that, that's in front of you. So you can keep track of who's, who's on and uh, what their, uh, their uh, contact information is. So we'll start out with Debbie Donahue. Great, thank you, Mac. Thanks, Cynthia, and all of the TEN board and ILE. My name is Debbie Donahue from Imagine Exhibitions, and we also have Agnes Ruiz from Imagine Exhibitions online today. And it is wonderful to see everybody's smiling face. I miss you all. Um, next slide, please. We are excited to announce a brand new dinosaur uh, exhibition called Dinosaur Explorer. You will discover the wildest, strangest, and most interesting dinosaurs and what makes them unique. Dinosaur Explorer features interactives that invite visitors to compare their own physiology and behaviors to dinosaurs. Roar like a dinosaur, see like a dinosaur, and explore how your own body works compared to these amazing prehistoric animals. Next slide, please. Dinosaur Explorer is a brand new exhibition which is debuting in the spring of 2022. It's 4,000 to 6,000 square feet and has paleontology content from Dr. Gregory Erickson, who's a paleontologist from Florida State University. It covers topics such as biomechanics, biology, anatomy, and ecology. Next slide, please. Dinosaur Explorer is a modular, affordable new traveling exhibition that can fit into a wide variety of venues and will offer interactives, fossils, and fun for all ages. Next slide, please. Moving on to our, another exhibition, uh, Earth Matters from SciTech is on its way to the United States. If you would like to go see it in person, it will be at the South Florida Science Center from December to May of 2022. And it is a highly interactive exhibition that focuses on sustainability. It's available the spring of 2023 and beyond, and it's bilingual in English and Spanish. Next slide, please. We have also revamped our Discover Steampunk exhibition to be a four to 6,000 square foot exhibition. And it has availability in the summer of 2022 and the summer of 2023 and beyond. We have a portfolio of over 40 traveling exhibitions. Please contact us for more information. Thank you. Okay, then we we'll move, move, move on to Shane. Hi, everyone. My name is Shane McConnell. I am not Paul Goulet, even though it says Paul Goulet on the front there. Uh, he was unavailable to join us today. I'm the Director of Sales and Marketing for Little Ray's Exhibitions and Little Ray's Nature Centers. Um, we're, if you don't know who we are, we are one of the largest exotic animal rescues in North America. We also create and operate a series of themed animal exhibits and nature centers across North America as well. Next slide. One of the exhibits that we have available right now to be booked um, is actually expanding to 10,000 square feet. It is our under the canopy exhibit. Um, all of our exhibits are modular and would be able to fit in anything from 2,500 2, to 10,000 square foot uh, spaces. Next slide. Wildlife Rescue is currently on display at the Cleveland Museum of Natural History. This is a uh, two-part exhibit um, that is uh, Hope on the Horizon and Miracles in Conservation. They can be combined to fill a space up to 12,000 square feet. It is available. Uh, next slide, please. Nature's Ninjas is our newest exhibit. Um, one of our probably the most expensive exhibit we've ever made. We're really excited to announce that it just launched at the Fernbank Museum of Natural History and is now available for 2022. Um, we're taking pretty much any booking. Um, next slide. Survival of the Slowest is probably our uh, first major exhibit that we created. It's also our most popular exhibit. Um, it is currently booked out until 2024, but we actually just created a new version for 2,500 to 5,000 square foot spaces. And we actually have available starting availability 
starting in 2022, 2023, and it's already started booking out pretty quickly. So let us know if you're interested. Next slide. All of our exhibits are, uh, are fully, um, fully staffed. We take care of everything from uh, in installation to, to closing. And uh, we have staff in there every single day running presentations, educational programming, pretty much anything. So um, if you're short on staff, our exhibits are a great opportunity and option to bring in because we, uh, we can really help with uh, bringing in something new. Thank you very much, everyone. <laughs> Okay, moving quickly to Natalie. Hi everyone, thank you for having us here. I, before I get started, I just wanna let you know that we have a new project consultant on board. Yay for me. Her name's Tiffany Wilkinson. Please say hi to her if you see her around the conference. She'll also be our, in our booth. So uh, just say hi to her. Um, I wanted to talk to you today about MindWorks. This exhibition allows you to explore your mind, your own mind. We're hoping that after visiting, your guests will leave knowing something more about themselves and how they think and react to life and possibly reflect on some of the things that make them them. We have availability starting in the spring of 2022. These are the topics that are covered in the exhibition through a variety of interactives, either alone or in a group. Some of them you're standing, some sitting, crawling, twisting, lying down even, we have it all. So one thing to note though, is that we've treated copy panels a little bit differently in this show. There are only instructional panels at the exhibits and then there are more in-depth information at four portals throughout the exhibition. That's so that we can get you to be and live sort of in the moment in the exhibits and sort of really get into your own mind. So these above the topics that was in the previous slide, they come to life in these exhibits here. Um, one example of a COVID change is that the VR experience will have monitors for now. Um, we'll bring the goggles back when we're able to. Memory is one of the topics that's covered. And I know that we're all talking about our memory right now and things seem a little bit fuzzy. Uh, 2020 seems to have disappeared from a lot of our memories. So it's interesting how our mind is working during this time and how our memories of this time is, is actually working. We also take incoming exhibitions. We are looking for traveling exhibitions for the summer of 2022, the spring of 2023 and beyond. Please reach out to Heather Farnworth with this information on incoming exhibitions. If you'd like to find out more about MindWorks or any of our other products or services, please visit us at our booth or reach out to us, either Heather or I directly. Thank you. Okay, uh, Sarah from Indianapolis. Hi everyone, I am Sarah. I'm from the Children's Museum of Indianapolis. Next slide, please. We are taking bookings for our newest exhibit, Barbie, You Can Be Anything, The Experience. The exhibit showcases, <laughs> the exhibit welcomes visitors with the inspirational story of Barbie creator, Ruth Handler. It showcases a variety of career dolls from the past six decades and highlights female role models who have broken boundaries. The core of the exhibit provides families a chance to explore over 15 careers through hands-on and touchscreen interactives, themed role-play environments and photo ops. The tour will begin in summer of 22 after a long extended stay in Indianapolis. Um, the exhibit has been very popular amongst visitors. And if you don't believe me, you can ask Mitch from Minnesota for his review of the exhibition. Um, I've included links um, to the virtual walkthroughs of several of our exhibits in this PowerPoint. So once Cynthia sends out the PDF, you'll be able to go back and click through the links to explore um, some of our exhibits virtually. Um, for the Barbie, I've also included a link um, to a Facebook Live walkthrough with our exhibit developer, so you guys can see more of the content of the exhibition. All right, general rule, please. Um, next slide. I am thrilled to announce our newest partnership with Warner Brothers, Scooby-Doo Mansion Mayhem. For over five decades, the members of Mystery Inc. have shown that through courage, teamwork, and ingenuity, even the toughest mysteries can be solved. In Scooby-Doo Mansion Mayhem, Visitors are invited to walk alongside um, Mystery Inc. to solve cases, the case of the jewel thieving ghost, 
Um, summoning their courage, families will enter the exhibit ready to observe, ask questions, and interpret clues to help the gang crack the case. The exhibit will debut next summer in Indy before hitting the road in spring of 23. Next slide. Um, here's our full list of availabilities. Um, once you get the PDF, you'll be able to see it um, better. Let me know if you have interest in any of the open slots. Um, also, several of our tours are nearing their end, um, but if there's enough market demand, we can extend the tour. So just let me know about those as well. Um, and then next slide. Um, finally, we are retiring our Lego based exhibit and our beloved Dora and Diego. Um, if you have interest in buying any of these components without the branding, please let me know. And then as always, we have a lot of good um, trash um, that we're willing to sell and to give to other venues, great exhibit components, cases, etc. If you have interest, please email trash to treasures at childrensmuseum.org for the newsletter. Thank you. Okay, then we uh, will move right on to Mark Greenberg. Hey, everybody. Uh, next slide, please. I'm Mark Greenberg. And today we're going to talk mostly about sharks. Uh, it's an exhibition created by the Australian Museum. So like this is an exhibit about sharks, but it's really an exhibition about us. Uh, having swum in the world's oceans for more than 450 million years and survived five global mass extinctions, Sharks are, under, are now under grave threats. Global warming, industrial fishing, and pollution are damaging our oceans. So in this exhibition, visitors are invited to explore sharks' genetic diversity, their territories, and their significance to ocean ecosystems, and understand that our attitudes and actions will decide the fate of these ancient survivors. So really, who's better to produce an exhibition about sharks than uh, the Australian Museum? Australian waters contain about one third of the world's shark species, making Australia uniquely placed for shark study and research. The Australian Museum Research Institute is a leading and internationally recognized scientific institution with a strong focus on marine biodiversity. And the exhibition explores the human shark cultural connection across a diverse range of First Nation people. For many First Nation people, sharks are often sacred and powerful creatures, which are treated with respect, not fear and loathing. Uh, so in this exhibit, there are large, breathtaking shark models and a wide range of interactive experiences. Uh, you can see the world in the 360-degree view through the eyes of a hammerhead shark, adapt your shark to evolve and survive in different environments, see the effects of eliminating sharks from a digital ecosystem, even take a shark personality test. Uh, you know, like, are you a picky eater or do you steal food off your friend's plate? Do you like to travel in a pack or roam wide open spaces by yourself? Or maybe you'd like to stay up all night at your favorite beach, in which case you are so a Port Jackson shark. Um, our centerpiece is an immersive cylindrical surround theater where sharks slowly swim around, where the visitor can, with an arm wave, select and interact with the sharks with cutting edge audiovisual, diverse First Nation stories, and exploration of climate change. Next slide, please. Um, we're also touring two other exhibitions from the Australian Museum, Tyrannosaurs and Spiders. Um, next slide, please. Next slide, please. So anyways, it's uh, please come see us at our Aztec virtual booth or contact us for more information. One more slide <laughs> and we're done. Thank you all. Okay, then uh, move on to Pittsburgh with Rachel. Hi. I'm Rachel Mastromarino, Children's Museum of Pittsburgh, and today I'll be featuring a few exhibitions that have upcoming availability. And if anything piques your interest, contact me. Mention the 10 and ILE Traveling Exhibition Forum for special pricing. Uh, next slide, please. How people make things. Every object in our world has a story of how it's made and how people make things tells that story by showing visitors the way in which familiar childhood objects are manufactured and the people, ideas, and technology used to transform raw materials into finished product. This STEM content classic is available for summer of 2022. Um, next slide, please. Emotions at Play with Pixar's Inside Out encourages visitors to explore the important role emotions, memory, and imagination play in our everyday lives. Hands-on digital experiences helps visitors recognize and manage emotions. This new favorite has a rare opening for fall 2022. And I will say it is maybe almost under contract. So if you're interested, reach out quickly. Um, next slide, please. Um, 
Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood, a terrific exhibit, invites visitors to step into Daniel Tiger's world and join him and his friends as they explore the neighborhood. Visitors work together to solve problems, use their imagination, and play along with Daniel's singable strategies to learn life's little lessons. This lovable character favorite is available for fall 2022. And unfortunately, the pigeon is no longer available for fall 2022 since I submitted these slides. But if you're interested in bringing the pigeon to your venue for a future date, please reach out. Um, next slide, please. And Rube Goldberg, the world of hilarious invention showcases Pulitzer Prize winning humorous and inventor Rube Goldberg's iconic contraptions, um, imaginative illustrations and humorous storytelling, celebrating his skills as both an artist and an inventor. The STEAM content exhibition is available for fall 2022. Uh, last slide, please. Contact me, Rachel, uh, at exhibits at pittsburghcage.org for more information. Um, and like I said, mention this uh, forum for special pricing for our summer and fall 2022 openings. And I hope to see all of you in person next year in Pittsburgh for Aztec of 2022 um, so we can get off of Zoom and start seeing each other in real life. Thanks. Okay, and then uh, on to uh, Kelly from Minotaur. Hey, everybody. I'm Kelly with Minotaur Mazes. Uh, we're grateful to have played a part in many successful seasons this year as we all seek to reset and rebound from 2020. Feedback from hosts has been enthusiastic and strong. I'll share a few. Next slide. Rainforested, whoa. Oh, go to the next slide and then we'll go back. Rainforest Adventure has been a huge hit. This really has helped us with reopening this summer. We're thrilled with Mission Safari and the glowing feedback from kids and adults. And visitors love amazing pollinators, high quality, immersive, and educational for all ages. Thanks for letting us be a part of your success. Now, can you go back? As many of you know, Amazing Pollinators was honored with a Thea Award at a ceremony last month. It's now at its fifth appearance and its first in Canada. This uniquely engaging exhibit fills 4,000 to 7,000 square feet and has openings starting in 2022. Next slide, please, or two slides now. <laughs> we successfully enhanced, these seem to be um, kind of mid, uh, out of vertical hold or something. Uh, nothing you can do, huh? Strange. We successfully enhanced Mission Safari, our indoor and outdoor endangered species exhibit with a biodiversity program doubling its content and interactives to rave reviews at a zoo this summer. And it just opened indoors at a Michigan museum for the fall. We're launching botanical versions called Mission Botanica next summer in Cleveland. We're also excited to suffuse these mission exhibits with light to create glow for winter lighted events. Next slide, please. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Thank you. Many. Uh, Minotaur's 12 exhibits range in size from 1,500 to 10,000 square feet, many of which are priced from 30 to $50,000 for three months. I was just, pot I was just uh, timing myself as well. Uh, there's a reason our exhibits are loved by visitors and staff alike, alike, and there's a reason three quarters of our appearances are repeat hosts. Next slide. We have openings in 2022, and we'd love to work with you. Let us help you thrive. Okay, and now we can we can go across the ocean with Felicity from London. Hello, hi everybody. Um, great, yeah, I'm Felicity from the Natural History Museum in London. Good to see you all. Um, so today I want to show you uh, Jurassic Ocean's Monsters of the Deep and Wildlife Photographer of the Year. Next slide, please. Wildlife Photographer of the Year is an annual photography competition open to everyone. Around 45,000 entries are whittled down to 100 winning images, uh, which are seen in London and then tour the world. The photos capture what a photographer sees through their lens in the wild or in urban environments. They illustrate our interaction with nature, both the good and the bad. The images change every year and are displayed in two formats, which are installed by host teams. Light boxes are seen in the first uh, in the top row for galleries uh, 5,000 square foot and dive bomb panels for galleries of 3,300 square feet are seen on the bottom row. Next slide, please. 
So this year, three new categories are added, oceans, the bigger picture, natural artistry, and wetlands, the bigger picture. These new categories highlight vital ecosystems and show the importance of wildlife photography in documenting and raising awareness of conservation issues. You can host this exhibition in summer or fall 2022 and throughout 2023 when we'll be touring the 58th edition. Please let me know if you want to hear more. Next slide, please. Have you ever wondered what life in the oceans was like at the time of the dinosaurs? Now it's time to find out as we come face to face with huge predators, strange sea life and their prey. We bring ancient sea creatures to life through more than 90 objects and immersive CGI experiences in Jurassic Ocean's Monsters of the Deep. This exhibition includes all set works, display cases and exhibits for galleries from 7,000 square feet. Next slide, please. There are interactives, films to watch and education activities to add in as well. Text is available in bilingual American English and Spanish. Next slide, please. And last but not least, the museum is selling um, animatronic dinosaurs, replica fossils, and much more as we retire dinosaur touring exhibitions. If you'd like to know more um, or you're interested in purchasing, please um, drop me an email. I think um, my email address has just dropped off the bottom there, but I'll put it in the chat. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thanks very much. And uh, look forward to seeing you all at Aztec this week. And many thanks for listening. Okay, then uh, Amanda. Hi, my name is Amanda Wiltsey and I am the Exhibition Tours Manager at Exhibits USA, which is operated by Mid-America Arts Alliance. And today I'll be talking to you about some of our newest traveling exhibitions. Next slide, please. Oh, back one, please. Back one. Oh, I, I apologize, okay. First, The Unchosen One encompasses a series of portraits of young people posed with animals that they have raised, cared for, and groomed for entry into animal competitions with dreams of glory of moving on to state fair victory. No victory is shown here, however. These animals and their young owners were not champions. They came in second or third or not at all. Here on the sidelines of the main events, these disappointed children and their beloved animals illustrates a small backstory preserving a moment only history can, as only photography can. Next slide, please. Walking in Antarctica is an immersive interdisciplinary exhibition bringing together photography, sculpture, and audio narrative to take the viewer on a journey through the extraordinary environment of remote places in Antarctica. This exhibition is organized as a series of walks through remarkable Antarctic landscapes, over frozen lakes, around towering glaciers, and broke sea ice formations, and into magnificent frozen ice caves, and across fields of surreal looking boulders, and through a lively colony of nesting penguins. Next slide, please. Born in England in 1937, John Hopkins, better known as Hoppy, was one of the best known counterculture figures in London in the 1960s, not just as a photographer and journal journalist, but as a political activist as well. The 60s through the eyes of a revolutionary by John Hoppy Hopkins tells this story through 66 framed works by the late artist, activist, and photojournalist. Next slide, please. This transformative photography exhibition draws from 12 years of work created by the Aftermath Project, a nonprofit organization committed to telling the other half of war stories after the conflicts have ended and what it takes for individuals to rebuild. Next slide, please. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I wanna be mindful of everyone's time. My contact information is on that slide. And thank you so much. Okay, now we get, get back to the United States, or pardon me, if we are back in the United States, we'll go to the American Museum anyway. Matt? Well, hi everyone, Matt Heenan from the American Museum of Natural History. And, uh, you know, as always, it's great to be here. Thank you to the TEN team and the ILE team, and may we never have one of these remote things again. These have been great, but I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm over it. But anyway, next slide, please. We're very excited about our newest exhibition, Sharks, which opens in New York in December. 
The exhibition examines the fascinating and mysterious world of sharks and investigates the breadth of shark diversity, the challenges and benefits of humans and sharks coexisting, and the role that sharks play in ocean ecosystems. Going far beyond the stereotype of the terrifying hunter, Sharks is going to be a particularly beautiful exhibition and highly immersive with features such as a massive projection wall and a gesture mapping experience. Uh, next slide, please. A key part of this exhibition will be the amazing models that will be shown, a few of which you can see being worked in, in our studio here. The models include a life-size megalodon, which is featured in the ancient shark section, and a parade of sharks with approximately 50 life-size models. As with many of our exhibitions now, we'll be organizing a walkthrough video and VR tour for those people who can't visit in person. Next slide, please. The next exhibition, The Hidden Beauty of Seeds and Fruits, celebrates the diversity of plants and the evolutionary adaptations that have developed in their drive to reproduce. This large format, high resolution series of 81 images was created by the renowned photographer Levon Biss and captures in striking and microscopic detail the intricacies of the botanical world. The exhibition showcases the carpology collection of the Royal Botanic Gardens Edinburgh, with many specimens dating back to the early 19th century and collected by pioneer botanists of their time. Next slide, please. Through these amazing photos, the exhibition stimulates the wonders of nature and hopefully will inspire the next generation of botanists, artists, and scientists. The exhibition is provided digitally for each venue to print and display indoors or out. We'll send everything you need, including images, captions, text, marketing, press, and an educator guide. You can also choose to display specimens from your own collection. And there's a wonderful book, The Hidden Beauty of Seeds and Fruits, also available. Last slide, please. We're also actively looking out for new relationships and partnerships across the globe. And please do reach out if you have any ideas or content proposals. Thanks, everyone. See you next time. Okay, uh, on, on to Heidi. Heidi, are you with us? Heidi's muted. Oh, sorry, I just gave a great introduction opening everybody. Hello, I miss you all. You can see I'm tired of Zoom as well and hope it never happens again. So here I am, Heidi Pinchall. I am with Bodre Interactive. I'm here to share our reflections, recognitions and renewals for 2021. Next slide, please. A luminous terrain, You've, it, we introduced luminous terrain last year. It is an outdoor, it immerses the guest in color and lights. It's very interactive with intelligent lighting and it is through a series of games. This year we've come up with a linear version that makes it touring a lot easier. Our folks up north have really liked it a lot, maybe because it does well on snow, grass, dirt or regular pavement. So this is a touring uh, piece that you can do, great for the holidays as well, or you can add it for a permanent collection to your outdoor. Next slide, please. Light Sprites is another wonderful outdoor experience that we have to enhance your guest. Um, it's a sophisticated lighting that has the ability to emulate things like fireflies, fireworks, even do uh, imaginative wayfinding. Um, it took a lot of math and a few geniuses, but this light will actually interact with you. So as fireflies, if you stay real still, the fireflies will come around you. And if you shake your hands off, the fireflies will go. And it interacts with you throughout your entire experience. This is also available touring, or it can be a permanent collection for you. It's great for the holidays, or it can even create a whole entire stomach experience for you. Next slide, please. When we look at recognition and reflection in 2022, we have to say thank you to our partners at Discovery Cube, Kennedy Space Center, Sesame Street. Through all the experience that we're having with them, we've created a series of freestanding plug and play interactives. These um, interactives we have developed for the younger audiences and we've put them into the environmental interactive. And next slide, please. Also the exhibits for early learners. So we can use these together or we can use these separated. So this is if you are starting to plan a new touring exhibit, you want to enhance a touring exhibit or even something like scrubbing bubbles is a nice addition to just teach kids how to get in and out and wash those hands. In addition, uh, from the first slide ago, the um, school, the interactive school fish plane is really, really fun and can create any area and do an interactive. Last slide, please. 
Thank you again very much. We really miss everybody. We're here to help you with R&D. Please come and take a look at our new series of products we have them posted at our virtual booth. Bye now. Okay, uh, Agnes. Hello everyone. Uh, thank you, Mac and the TN board for organizing this always popular event. Um, I'm Agnes with Imagine Exhibitions and I'm glad today to represent our partner, Universe Science in Paris and talk about their new exhibition, Banquet. Next slide, please. So banquetic is spectacle and performance. So it's combining adonism and erudition. So the exhibition will be an interactive and sensory experience centered around the celebratory and communal aspects of feasting. Next slide, please. Science and culture are inter intertwined in the many aspects of gastronomy. The visitor, the visitor tours the exhibition through three different stages. In the kitchen, stepping into the cook's shoes will be a chance for visitors to learn about the right techniques, the chemistry in it and cooking methods before taking a more innovative approach in the kitchen. Also sensory and cognitive information comes together to determine whether it's yummy or not. Visitors will test their perceptions with some surprising experiments. Next slide, please. The visit hand, ends at the banquet table. The social sciences question our eating habits across cultures and eras. It is an immersive and multi-sensory show for 30 guests around the banqueting table, table and a menu designed by the French chef mm -hmm. Thierry Marx and the scientist Raphael Oumont. Last slide, please. And it will be on display at the Cité des Sciences et de l'Industrie in Paris from November of this year until August 2022. And it will be available for touring from fall 2022. The exhibition will be about 9,000 square feet. Thank you for your attention and see you on our Imagine Exhibitions booth. And I am dropping again my email in the chat box in case you have any question. Thank you and see you next year, I hope. Okay, thank you, uh, Clayton. Hey guys, I'm Clayton Ferguson of Agency 808, and I'm proud to present Crayola Idea Works, the creativity exhibition to y'all today. The exhibition debuted earlier this year at the Franklin Institute and continues through Thanksgiving before heading to a major city, which we will be announcing in the coming weeks. The exhibition continues to receive strong attendance as well as very positive reviews, the latter putting Idea Works directly in line with the Franklin's top four traveling exhibitions to date. For over 100 years now, Crayola has been synonymous with creativity, and this entertaining and educational exhibition that we designed reminds us that we all are creative, and that creativity is a skill that we must learn and develop. Next page, please. In immersive and in, excuse me, in the immersive and dynamic environments, visitors practice their creative problem-solving skills and put those skills to the test in solving current and socially relevant scientific challenges. This modular exhibition appeals to guests of all ages, specifically targeting the core demo of five to 12 year olds, as well as early tweens. Next page. Each visitor's experience, uh-oh. There we, uh, we go one up. Well, we'll just have a pause on that one. Uh, in immersive and dynamic environments, visitors practice their creative problems. Oh, I just said that, excuse me, got me thrown off. Uh, each visitor's experience is customized utilizing RFID wristbands, which provide checkpoints throughout the exhibition while tracking individuals' creative strengths. Next page, please. The exhibition has three areas. The idea workshop, where visitors hone in on their creative problem-solving skills in identifying, defining, exploring, and assessing the challenges highlighted before them. Next page. We now enter the colorverse where real science is rooted. Visitors are faced with real life issues in three different zones, on land, under the sea, and in space at our Mars colony hub. In each zone, guests are encouraged to find creative solutions utilizing the skills they have just honed. Next page, please. And the grand finale, where visitors' creative strengths are revealed, encouraging and more importantly, empowering guests to make their mark on the world. Time periods are filling up and we'd love to bring IdeaWorks, the creativity exhibition to your museum. Thanks for your time today, guys.
Okay, uh, Corrado. Very well, good afternoon, good evening, actually, here. Um, Corrado Canonici, World Touring Exhibitions, uh, London and Rotterdam. We are uh, exhibitions, producers and providers. Uh, we have exhibitions of various different kinds, but the time is really, really short, so I'd like to go directly on what we present today. Uh, next slide, please. It is the long march to freedom. It is our 20th anniversary in the business, and we are very proud of having uh, this exhibition of acquired uh, worldwide exclusive rights for this exhibition, which is probably not exactly an ASTC theme, but certainly is a very universal theme of great importance, I believe. Uh, next slide. The exhibition is about South Africa honoring the, 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 the liberation struggle in South Africa and the world over. There are statues of, of kings from the 1700s, which we might not know, as well as of very famous activists from, from most recent times. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, it is made of 97 life-size bronze statues. They are absolutely exceptional, touching, monumental, really. They've been created by professional sculptors as well as community artists supported by professionals. Visiting this exhibition makes one reflect deeply about colonialism, what it really meant, and the effort needed for indigenous populations sometimes to acquire rights, which should have been theirs from the very beginning. Next slide. This exhibition also reminds us that there are many forms of segregation and discrimination actually everywhere in the world right now. Uh, this exhibition uh, can be uh, exhibited indoor and outdoor, and I believe it's an exhibition that must be seen by as many as possible, especially in a moment like this, when we eventually are quite sensitive to, to, to such matters. Uh, next slide, please. That's the last one. The exhibition is a nas national heritage exhibition of South Africa. It is available for the very first time uh, for world touring. And contact us, please, World Touring Exhibitions, Corrado Canonici, worldtouringexhibitions.com. Thank you very much. Okay, um, Anne. Okay. Hello, hello, everyone. Great to see you. Um, my name is Anne Rashford. I'm with MSI in Chicago, and I'm presenting two exhibits today. Numbers in Nature, A Mirror Maze, which is a permanent exhibit at MSI, and due to its popularity, we created a traveling version, and an exhibit that we are premiering next week, Black Creativity Architecture. Next slide, please. Numbers in Nature, A Mirror Maze is a five to 6,000 square foot exhibition with the highlight being a 2,000 square foot mirror maze. Next slide, please. That exits into an interactive gallery where guests will uncover the patterns in nature, their bodies, and in centuries of art, music, and architecture. Numbers in Nature is available spring 22 and beyond. Next slide, please. For more than 50 years, MSI's Black Creativity Program has developed exhibitions showcasing African-American contributions, past, present, and current in the fields of art, science, technology, engineering, and medicine. Black Creativity Architecture is the first in a series of do-it-yourself exhibitions which can be customized to fit your budget, space, schedule, and resources with no shipping fees. Next slide, please. This DIY print-on-demand exhibit consists of digital assets, media, and educational material, and allows your venue to add local flavor and curated content. I've added a few images of the galleries as we prepare to open next week. The exhibition highlights 25 past, present, and emerging architects and their work and provides templates so you can include architects from your community. Next slide, please. We've added content to make it our own with models from architects, the materials library, and artifacts from a historic building designed by the first black architect licensed in Illinois. The Black Creativity Architect exhibition will be available on December 21 to download. Thank you. Okay, uh, Chris. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Chris McGarity from the Film Museum. Uh, it's great to see all of you. Um, there's a couple of things I'd like to share with you, uh, new exhibitions and also some near term availability for a few of our other exhibitions. Uh, next slide, please. Ooh, it's cutting off halfway, but that's okay. Um, the first is our newest exhibition, Death, Life's Mystery. Uh, this exhibition is currently in development, but we just cleared a major milestone. So it's really starting to take shape. We will focus on both cultural stories and ones from the natural world. 
Um, one example, and this was completely new to me, um, is a whale fall. This is an entire ecosystem that develops around the, the body of a fallen whale on the ocean floor, and it shows how life and death are cyclical. Uh, next slide, please. Um, this exhibition aims to get visitors thinking about a number of tough questions and challenging what they think they know about death. Uh, here is a series of photos of animals grieving, and that's just another concept that is not familiar to very many people. Um, uh, here it is in the, told in the context of how will my death affect the living. Uh, other questions in the exhibition include what is death? What if I don't want to die? What will happen to my body and to my soul or self? Um, all of these questions stem from a central nexus space for reflection, which also features a multi-sensory experience depicting the cyclical nature of life and death. Uh, death opens at the fields next fall, so we will have more information to share in the coming months. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, Antarctic Dinosaurs has had a, a successful tour after opening at the fields in 2018, but we're starting to think about the future of the exhibition and what that might look like. Uh, if you were interested in this exhibition, but this current version doesn't work for you, please reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. Next slide, please. So for availability, um, the death tour will launch in the fall of 23. Uh, Antarctic Dinosaurs is available beginning next fall. Upsalika Women and Warriors has a very limited tour. We have two bookings in 22, which uh, leaves only three slots available in 23. And then Sue remains the most popular exhibition it is now booked through the summer of 23, but is available in fall 23 and beyond. Uh, last slide, please. Uh, if any of these exhibitions may be a good fit for you, please reach out to Evelyn or myself. Uh, and also please visit our virtual booth. Sadly, we don't have uh, Swedish fish this year, but we promise to make up for that next year, hopefully in person. And uh, we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, Carrie. Hi everyone, I'm Carrie Reed. I work for Flying Fish, a touring exhibition producer that partners with museums and science centers to create and distribute exhibitions globally. Uh, next slide, please. Oh, I did it too. Oh man. Okay. Uh, Mission Astronaut will be a STEM exhibit for kids where visitors will enter a space station and engage with its many parts applying problem solving skills and learning about an astronaut's job on a mission. The concept is currently in development. We plan to confirm our science partner in the next couple of months to support the exhibit science communication. Our partner may produce an educator's guide and will ideally premiere the exhibition in fall 23 or later. We're still looking for that partner, so contact me if you're interested. Uh, next slide, please. Since uh, this is a science conference and since cooking is a science, I'm excited to tell you about our Julia Child exhibition. We're working with the Napa Valley Museum, the Julia Child Foundation for Gastronomy and the Culinary Arts, the Schlesinger Library, and Julia's great nephew and author, Alex Prudhomme. In 3,500 square feet, this exhibit will not only look back on Julia's life and celebrity as the chef on PBS, but it will celebrate Julia as a female pioneer and innovator. This will premiere in the summer of 2023. We have availability starting in 24. Next slide, please. James Cameron Challenging the Deep explores James Cameron's achievements in deep ocean science, engineering, and exploration, including his record-breaking dive to the bottom of the planet in his deep sea challenger submersible. The exhibition just concluded at the Durham Museum in Omaha and is headed next to TELUS World of Science in Edmonton. There, the exhibition will display alongside the actual submersible and their IMAX will play the 3D film Deep Sea Challenge. I'm looking for a house with approximately 4,000 square feet or more next summer or later. Next slide, please. Please visit our website to explore our entire portfolio of services and traveling exhibitions, including hockey, which premieres at Pacific Science Center this month. Next slide. And there's, I'll put my contact info in the chat, um, but yeah, contact me for any booking or co-production opportunities. Thanks so much. I do not have a booth, so shoot me a note. Thanks. Okay, moving on, uh, Mia. Um, hold on just one second. Um, Natalie, if you can just uh, reformat there those slides so that it's view 
one slide only. Um, we're only seeing a portion of the slides. I don't know if everyone else is also. Uh, I think it, some of them are fine and some of them aren't fine. So hang on one second. Let, let me see if I have to get out of this. View mode. Okay. Awesome. Thanks so much. Yep. Thanks, guys. Uh, hi, I'm Mia Schlaes Nelson, Mount House Exhibit Services. Next slide, please. First up, we have our live butterfly exhibition experiences. These are freestanding enclosures, range in size from 1,200 to 5,000 square feet or more. They're flexible, they can be placed seasonally outdoors or year round indoors. Uh, we are planning for the summer 2022 season and beyond. Next slide, please. We also have Wolves and Wild Lands. This is uh, in collaboration with the International Wolf Center. It's currently on display at the Como Park Zoo and Conservatory. Uh, focuses on conservation initiatives that wolves face. And uh, it is available starting in winter of 2022 and beyond. Next slide, please. Monarchs and Milkweed, a story of survival takes the visitor on a journey into the world of butterflies and plants and introduces the complex relationship between monarchs and milkweed specifically. The popularity of monarch butterflies is far reaching and through this familiarity, complex topics can be made accessible and easily discoverable for visitors of all ages. Uh, a free series of freestanding furniture units create exploratory space within the gallery with opportunities for discovery at every turn. Built-in design flexibility means that the individual pieces work together or as separate individual exhibit pieces that can be stationed throughout many galleries. We have, uh, are proud to announce that we have our, our inaugural booking with the uh, North Carolina Arboretum. There is um, incentive booking for the early part of the tour of this exhibition starting uh, in spring of 2022. It also pairs really well with the live butterfly exhibit. Next slide, please. Thanks so much for your time. We have other exhibits that are near-term availability. Many include living collections of insects and uh, arthropods. Call for details, next slide. You can reach me here and visit our website. Thanks so much. Okay, uh, Sharon. Uh, my name is Cass Barber. I'm actually going to be standing in for Sharon Smallwood today. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> we have a variety of themes in our portfolio at very reasonable price points. Our exhibitions have very strong science content and range in square footage from about 1,500 square feet to 3,000 square feet. Our exhibitions work really well if you want to spread out for social distancing. So if you're looking for to fill a larger gallery, we have multiple smaller exhibitions that can be displayed together to easily fill four to 5,000 square feet. Next slide, please. We are excited to announce our newest exhibition. Uh, it's called Life on the Edge. Uh, it starts touring in January, 2022 with the first rental availability in fall, 2022. The exhibition is in both English and Spanish and it ships in just one tractor trailer. Life on the Edge explores extreme environments and it teaches the science behind our search for life in the universe. Things like, how do we know what a planet is like without ever going there? This exhibition covers everything from spectroscopy to an interactive where you get to program a Mars rover. Uh, the picture on this slide shows some beautiful hydrothermal vent models that move and project underwater movement. Next slide, please. On this slide, uh, you can see the ORI, which is part of the spectroscopy area and where you learn about planets, their atmospheres and the elements that make them up. And you can see the Winogradsky columns on the slide too, which are columns of ordinary mud growing very beautiful colonies of anaerobic life. Next slide, please. We have three exhibitions, which we've just completely refurbished. Uh, this included not just redesigns, but added elements to two of the exhibits. Um, they are tree houses with a rental price of $20,000, Attack of the Bloodsuckers for the price of $25,000, and Turtle Travels for $18,500. Next slide, please. Leonardo's Lab is one of the three exhibitions that we partner with the Carnegie Science Center. Those exhibitions are Leonardo's Lab, Bricksburg, and Gear Up. 
And Leo's lab is available in the fall of 2022, and there is availability in 2022 for Bricksburg. Next slide, please. Uh, please visit our website for additional information and downloadable flyers and promo videos, and certainly reach out to Sharon Smallwood if you have any questions. Thank you very much. Okay, Ed. Hi, I'm Ed Liske with the Smithsonian Traveling Exhibition Service and appreciate this chance to share some of our new exhibits. CITES has recently developed a set of traveling exhibitions related to biodiversity and climate change framed within the Smithsonian's philosophy of Earth optimism. They, they take audiences on a journey from awareness to action and offer hope in our changing world. Next slide, please. Life in One Cubic Foot looks at one way that scientists and citizen scientists are documenting our planet's biodiversity from exotic environments like the coral reefs of French Polynesia and the alien midwater ocean to more familiar places like New York City's Central Park. The exhibit features graphics and video that show the results of the hundreds, sometimes thousands of creatures that fit inside a one foot by one foot cube of earth. Next slide, please. What can one of the sea's most unusual looking mammals tell us about the future of the oceans? Narwhal revealing an Arctic legend offers insights into the relationship between narwhals and our changing global climate through examples from the collaborative work of Arctic researchers and members of the Inuit community of Pond Inlet. Next slide, please. And coming soon, Knowing Nature, the story of the boreal forest. In an age of climate change, the boreal forests store three times the amount of carbon as tropical forests. This exhibition looks at the biodiversity and global importance of the North American boreal forest through first-person accounts from Canadian First Nations, Alaskan Natives, and Native Americans, as well as conservationists, researchers, and artists. Next slide, please. And CITES offers these build-it-yourself science exhibitions, which include design files and production instructions to produce and customize exhibitions that are appropriate for both indoor and outdoor display. Next slide, please. Here's my contact info, and please visit our website, sites.si.edu. Thanks very much. Okay, um, Gary. Good afternoon, and nice to see everyone today. My name is Kiri O'Keefe, Director of Business Development for Exhibits Development Group and Culture Net Exchange. Next slide, please. Digital Me is our latest groundbreaking exhibition with Matatech Art and Science Museum based in Israel. It is a fully immersive state-of-the-art ex exhibition dealing with the most relevant topics of today's online world. It will make its world premiere on October 9th at Fleet Science Center in San Diego. If you'd like to see the exhibition or join us for the opening, please send me an email and we'd be pleased to pay for your trip if you host the exhibition. It is available January 2022 and beyond. Next slide, please. Our latest industry game changer. Uh, next slide, please. Thanks. Our latest industry game changer is the New Mexico based electric playhouse. And it is prepared to bring some of the most cutting edge digital hands free experiences to your institu institution, including a mix of games, artistic interactives, and educational experiences that are ready for exploration. We invite you to join the webinar to learn more. The link is in the presentation or email me directly. Next slide, please. Evolution has made its world debut with our Italian and Dubai creative partners. This immersive ex exhibit premiere in Saudi Arabia sold out the first month on opening day. It combines the most cutting edge technology with beautiful immersive stage settings and life-size animatronic dinosaurs to create a unique and jaw-dropping experience designed for all ages. Next slide, please. Worst case scenario is our collaboration with the Franklin Institute and GMC Fosse has been a favorite of the Aztec members. Based on the New York Times bestsellers, worst case scenario is now a survival experience. The exhibition provides practical situational exercises that utilize many of the skills that are at acquired through tinkering and making, encouraging exploration and discovery. It had record setting attendance at the Franklin and Science Museum, Oklahoma. Next slide, please. 
Culture Net Exchange is a new look and has undoubtedly become the biggest game changer in the museum and exhibition world. We have recycled or upcycled countless shipping containers and semi-trucks vital assets. If you have something to get rid of, contact us, contact us today. Cheers to Simon Aztec and this amazing community for their resilience through the pandemic. Hope to see you soon and be well. Thanks. Okay, we're we'll on to John. You there, John? I'm sorry. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, John Corcoran from Ripley's. Um, you know, I realized in trying to, what to think about, to, to talk about today, I realized what I really needed to do was apologize to a bunch of people because although some of your wonderful facilities have hosted a Ripley exhibit, for a lot of you, I literally have been trying to sell you the proverbial square peg into what might be your mission or budget or exhibit facility of a round hole. So, and I knew that that idiomatic expression was developed way back in 1836, but I've still been trying to sell you guys that square peg and that's just not right. But then I remembered, next slide, that we make pegs of any shape or size. So <laughs> here's a bunch of facilities that have hosted custom exhibits from us. These have ranged from 150 to, to uh, 150 square feet to filling an entire zoo. They have stayed for as little as 18 days or as much as 700 days. So whatever maybe you guys need, maybe there's a way to work. Um, you know, we've, we've created some really nice square pegs along the way, but if it's not the right fit for your facility, you know, talk to us, let us know what, uh, what shape peg you really need and we'll see if we can work something out. Um, Next slide, if you're coming to IAPA, uh, and I hear the IAPA in Europe was a big, big hit, and I noticed Anne was a little bit hoarse, so I'm thinking she had a good time there in, in Spain as well. But if you're coming to IAPA, make sure you'll look us up. We'll take you through our warehouse. Maybe you'll get some inspiration and help design a peg for your facility. Now, if you like the really, really nice square pegs that we make, that's fantastic, because we have a brand new one out there on the road that's doing great, and Troy from Science North will tell you about that next. Thanks, everyone. Okay, uh, Troy, you're up. Hey, everyone. Thanks. Uh, thanks for that introduction, John. And for those who don't know me, my name is Troy Rainville, and I'm with Science North. And I, like you, uh, Cynthia, wish that we could all be sharing a drink together instead of virtually presenting again. But uh, we appreciate uh, certainly all the work that Tan and ILE have done to provide us with this opportunity again. And uh, if you're going to be in IAPA, I'd love to see you. I'm planning on going there as well. Next page, please. The Science of Guinness World Records 6,000 square foot exhibit will engage visitors in real science experiences and record breaking challenges. Visitors will learn that anyone anywhere can be a record breaker while using science to develop their record breaking skills and abilities. Visitors will gain an understanding of their body and how it reacts, focuses and endures. The Science of Guinness World Records is developed in partnership with my square peg colleague uh, right before me, John from Ripley Entertainment. The exhibit was recently made, made as a US premiere at the Pro Museum in Dallas where it saw almost 6,000 visitors a week at its peak. Thanks, Mike Spiewak, I saw you on here. And now showing at the US Space and Rocket Center in Huntsville. Now, I won't read out all the stats on this next page, um, but as you can see, uh, clearly Guinness World Records brand continues to be highly relevant. So if you could advance the next page uh, and well known all over the world and will help drive awareness, visitation and engagement to your science center or museum. In addition, our partner, John at Ripley Entertainment will attend your opening and media events and in some cases even provide discounted advertising opportunities. So I've heard, uh, and he's a great speaker. I would encourage you to have him come if you host it. Next slide. The other blockbuster exhibit in our portfolio that I'd like to share with you today uh, is a brand new eight to 10,000 square foot traveling exhibit called Living Worlds Animal Planet Experience. Now it's in partnership with Kingsman Discovery and Science Center Singapore. And it's one of Discovery as a great global brands and it's available in about 360 million homes in more than 205 countries and territories. This exhibition is the first of its kind for the Animal Planet brand and is a perfect blend of smart meets fun and offers a rare peek into the animal world in a fun and engaging way. So beyond a showcase of the natural world, this exhibition explores the interdependent relationships between animals and the environments they inhabit and aims to foster environmental consciousness by highlighting how human activity impacts nature. Next page, please. 
Now we have several other exhibits, but I'm just featuring a few here that are near term that are coming up available in, in uh, 2022. So I'd love it if you wanna to speak to me more about that. And next slide, I uh, just wanna add that we also tour tra and uh, manage traveling exhibits for other partners. And we also co-develop. So if you have an exhibit that you'd like to bring to the market, uh, let's talk. I'd love to speak with you. And again, I'd love to see it at IAP if you're going. I hope I made two minutes. Thank you. Okay, uh, Sarah. Hello, lovely people. I am Sarah Macy, and I'm so excited to be joining you today. This year from the other side of the screen, as recently like last month, joined Dino Dawn after 14 years with Discovery Place in Charlotte. So a little bit about us. We make the world's biggest, most accurate, and affordable <laughs> robotics. Next slide. Our robotic dinosaurs are the only ones made under direct scientific supervision at the factory. They move in six ways, they breathe, shoot, they can even fart and pee. We combine them with skeletons, real fossils and activities into exhibitions like our record-breaking display at Eureka in Finland last year. For winter venues, we offer a gate share only model. So that means no lease fee. You just cover inbound shipping and installation. Next slide. Not only do we make the very best dinosaurs, but we also have robotic exhibitions themed around Ice Age animals, giant insects, dragons of the world, and in production now, sea creatures. We are conforming venues for our robotics exhibitions in 2022 this month. So please reach out so we can get you in the lineup. Next slide. Our growing collection of natural history exhibitions include Genghis Khan, the world touring blockbuster exhibition at a super affordable price point. It includes elaborate sets, role-playing, rare artifacts, and three times daily live performances. Next slide. And I am so excited to announce our brand new exhibition with you today, Dinosaur Journey, the immersive experience. It's the world's first truly immersive dinosaur exhibition. It'll feature a 5,000 square foot projection immersion jungle that envelops you as dinosaurs are brought back to life in stunning clarity. This mind-blowing experience is combined with hands-on interactives, skeletons, full-size dinosaurs, and original fossils. Next slide. Thank you all so much. Again, my name is Sarah Macy. Please give me a shout at smacy at dinodoninc.com or 704-975-6349. And I look forward to collaborating together. Okay, uh, Catherine. Hi friends, I am Catherine Diaz at OMSI in Portland, Oregon, and Daniel Guyton, Donna DiBartolomeo, and I manage our traveling exhibit program here. And we have nine exhibits touring currently and three that will launch very soon. Next slide, please. Allegra Mente, Happy Brain, Celebrating Early Connections is a small 1500 square foot exhibition that focuses on brain development and early in early childhood and um, offers easy, accessible tips for caregivers to support that brain development for a lifetime. Next slide, please. Snow, Tiny Crystals, Global Impact is an exhibition about the science of snow and climate change and how both are changing our world and our lives. Um, it is available in summer 2023 and beyond and is a 2,500 square foot exhibition. Next slide, please. Creatividad Silvestre, Wild Creativity, Biomimicry, Changing Our World is a bilingual Spanish-English exhibition. It's 2,500 square feet and engages visitors in biomimicry, encouraging them to design solutions to the challenges we face in our communities and around the world using nature as model, mentor, and measure. And it's available beginning fall 2023. Next slide, please. We have some exhibitions available near term in summer 2022, in fall, and then spring 2023. And they're all between 2,000 and 2,500 square feet. Next slide. 
OMSI also has a 13,000 square foot multi-level gallery, and we are looking for an exhibition to host in October 2022 for a five-month display. So if you have any ideas you want to share with us, please feel free. Um, my contact info and Daniel's contact info are on this last slide here. Thank you all. Okay, uh, Michelle. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to TEN and ILE for organizing this forum. I'm Michelle Wright, the Traveling Exhibit Sales Manager at the Minnesota Children's Museum. Um, slide. With 40 years of experience, Minnesota Children's Museum has the largest collection of children's traveling exhibits on the road. Our exhibits provide organizations with highly immersive educational experiences that boost attendance, engage visitors, and spark learning. Slide. Um, after some setbacks with COVID, we are so excited to finally launch our new exhibits, Shaun the Sheep, Flock This Way, which explores social emotional learning, and Wallace and Gromit Get Cracking, where inventions and contraptions often go hilariously wrong. These two exhibits <laughs> will begin at our museum in Minnesota, combined as Sheer Genius, the name is Sheer Genius, and for a brief time, the two combined exhibits, um, a total of 3,000 square feet, will be available in fall of 2022. And then the two exhibits will split off and go their own, their own ways. Um, slide. Near term, um, very near term, in spring 22, we have um, Wild Kratz Creature Power, where visitors are invited to explore incredible powers from animals around the globe. Um, Storyland. A uh, trip through childhood favorites, which includes cherished children's books brought to life, including Tale of Peter, Peter Rabbit, If You Give a Mouse a Cookie, and more. And Framed, Step into Art, um, where visitors enter a world in which paintings leap off the canvas and children are invited inside to interact with art. Um, next slide, please. Um, and then for summer of 2022, we have our popular exhibit, Thomas and Friends Explore the Rails, where visitors step into the island of Soder and climb aboard a large model of Tom Thomas the Trank engine and do many fun ac activities around the train yard. Run, Jump, Fly Adventures in Action is an exciting exhibit that gets kids active. And um, you don't want to miss Dinosaurs Land of Fire Vice with touchable dinos and ton of fun activities with life science and critical thinking skills. Um, slide. If you have any questions or would like to reach out about booking, you can contact me at this information here um, and I'll also post it in the chat. Thank you, everyone. Okay, uh, George. Thank you. Um, if you're looking for a exhibition that was created by an attraction for attractions that speaks specifically to the female skew 2554, Dinosaur Revealed is your exhibition. Uh, I can tell you right now, when was the last time you were on the front page of your newspaper or featured on the NFL Friday, Saturday, uh, Thursday night or Monday night? We have the exhibition for you. Dinosaurs Revealed is a fresh, immersive journey through 200 million years of history where guests encounter the sights, the sounds, the movements of nearly 26 life-sized animatronic dinosaurs, actual fossils, full dinosaur skeletons, and much more. This exhibition focuses on the dinosaurs that once roamed North America in your own backyard. That specifically really resonates with the guests that cause considerable media excitement that delivers early and sustainable ticket sales. Next slide, please. The exhibition content was developed in partnership with the University of Kansas Paleontology Department and our own Science City to ensure a complete scientific accuracy. It is fully immersive. In spaces as small as 5,000 square feet up to 15,000 square feet, this traveling indoor exhibition is modular, flexible, and can be adapted to any spaces. Slide three, please. The following a short introductory movie where the screen magically disappears above, we take you on a complete immersive journey through the halls of skulls, a complete dinosaur diorama, and scientific elements that engage every sense. Along with the journey, guests encounter actual fossils. They can touch, get up close to dinosaur movements, sounds, and creative presentation in their natural, as well, as their natural habitat, as well as some unique surroundings, 
like those of the tail of the trap of the battle ring that asked guests which dinosaur will prevail. It's Rocky all over again. Slide four, please. Dynamic motion graphics and intera interactive sand table, even a walking dinosaur costume can add to your experience. This complete marketing package is meant to ensure that it's top of mind and top of social media, and most importantly, top of your sales. Slide five, please. The exhibition does a masterful job of extending dwell times and keeping guest satisfaction as high as possible by including a massive dig site, magnetic walls, puzzle, floor projection, video from North American formations, and the Dino Lab, where you can talk up close and personal with your own paleontologist while you go on a hunting tour for fossils and expedition. Slide six, please. In the first two spots of this turnkey exhibition, spanning a total of 16 months, including COVID, this restrictions, over 265,000 guests have experienced dinosaur reveal and has rated one of the most top five-year projection satisfactory that we've ever had, getting a net promoter score of well over 90%. The simple truth is dinosaurs as a topic never gets old. It got us out of financial ruin many years ago, and then we will take you on a fascinating prehistoric journey that has proven to be a huge success with local, regional, and national audience. Dinosaurs in your own backyard, what more could you ask for? If you're interested, please give us a call or Jerry Baber at unionstation.org, and we look forward to working with you as you get out of COVID and get back to profitability. Okay, uh, Emily from London. Hi everyone, can you see me? Hello? Yep, yeah, you're here. Oh, okay, just <laughs> making sure. Um, hi everyone. My name is Emily. I'm uh, from the Science Museum of London. I'm excited to present Science Fiction Imagining Future Worlds, our latest blockbuster touring exhibition. Next slide, please. Um, next slide, please. Again. The exhibition is about science and technology's interaction with science fiction. The exhibition will showcase the power of imagination and creativity. Visitors will board a compellingly real spaceship and travel through nine zones, three immersive, three content, and three orientation. Through these experiences, they will explore how science and science fiction have imagined new worlds, encountering authentic and recognizable objects from celebrated film, television, literature, as well as scientific discoveries. These imagined and future worlds will be brought to life. Our ambition is to embrace the diversity of global science fiction, by exploring multicultural perspectives and identities, we will aim to address the historical imbalances and representation of both science and science fiction. Next slide, please. Throughout the zones, the connection between science fic and fiction is explored, presenting STEM topics such as space exploration, computing, and sustainability. Key STEM objects such as the Saturn V rocket, and Jean Sir Cernan's spacesuit are presented alongside iconic science fiction objects such as Iron Man, Robbie the Robot, and the USS Enterprise. Next slide, please. The Sir objects are from our collection but also acclaimed franchises and are combined with the exhibition's dramatic film content, interactive experiences, and experiences from an award-winning creative studio. Next slide, please. Finally, this exhibition includes minimum space of 10,000 square feet, a four month minimum uh, booking, and will be available to tour from fall 2023. Thank you, and please do contact me if you're interested in partnering with us to bring science fiction to you. Okay, uh, moving on to Steve. Hello, I'm Steve Frenette from the Dunn Museum in Libertyville, Illinois. And I'm here to promote two traveling exhibitions, Marvelocity 
The Art of Alex Ross, and Bill Sienkiewicz, Pop Culture Revolution. Next slide, please. Marvelocity, The Art of Alex Ross, highlights original artwork from comic book illustrator Alex Ross' most recent book, Marvelocity, a Marvel retrospective art book. Alex Ross is considered one of the greatest artists in the field of comic books and has been and has created some of the most iconic images known to fans today. Next slide, please. The exhibit features over 50 frameworks on paper, including paintings, preliminary sketches, and childhood drawings. There are also six resin head busts of Marvel characters and one small resin figure. The exhibit is approximately 1,500 square feet. Next slide, please. The next exhibit I'm here to talk about is Bill Sienkiewicz, Pop Culture Revolution. This exhibit highlights original artwork from artist Bill Sienkiewicz, who is a classically trained painter, best known for revolutionizing the style of comics and graphic novels, illustrations with works such as Moon Knight, Electra Assassin, and his acclaimed graphic novel, Stray Toasters. Next slide, please. The exhibit features over 50 framed works on paper, video interviews with Bill Sienkiewicz, high resolution digital image files, and exclusive access to Bill Sienkiewicz merchandise. The exhibit is approximately 1,500 to 2,000 square feet. Next slide, please. Availability for Bill Sienkiewicz Pop Culture Revolution, <clears throat> excuse me, begins in the fall of 2022. We have a few short term uh, slots open for Marvelocity from July 23rd, 2022 through September 4th, 2022. May 2023 through August 2023 is available. And there are some time slots available from October 2024 to December 2025. Please contact me or Robin Hill to request more information or visit the website listed on this page. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Uh, Liz, you're up. Maybe you could tell us what day and time it is. Sure, everyone. Good morning. Yes, no, it's it's a uh, very respectable uh, nine o'clock in the morning here to coffee time. So warm greetings. It's just lovely seeing you all. And Natalie, I think you can just sort of whip through my um, slides as I speak and end up on the last with my contact details. Just very quickly, I've got about five things to cover. So Bug Lab, very cinematic, immersive. These are various images of the show. We worked on this with Weta Workshop, a film studio who have done Lord of the Rings and Avatar. It's magical, it's mystical, it's grounded in high quality museum um, pedagogy. So that's next available. We are under discussion for a slot November 24 to April 25. So that's an possible. And after that, the next slot is May 2025. So it's very, very fully subscribed. It's an astonishing show. I'd just like to talk briefly and acknowledge Heather and all the team at the Ontario Science Centre where the show is currently being installed and will be on display until April. And I'd also especially like to make a shout out to Museums EXP and John Shaw and Cynthia who are our on the ground um, team. We work astonishingly a three-way Zoom operation between Te Papa here at a weird time zone, the Museums EXP team in Ontario and Heather's team. It's been an incredible experience. I'd just like to thank you. Um, I, I'm going to hint that we've got our next new natural history exhibition under development. It'll likely come to the market in late 2023. Can't say too much more, but if, you've, if I've piqued your interest, talk to me. It will be another major to pop a blockbuster. In the meantime, I'd like to um, encourage you to um, attend an Aztec presentation by our head of content, Frith Williams. She truly is in my eyes, the best concept developer in the museum industry. She's a Fulbright scholar. She, her talk is called Titaio, Merging Maori uh, and Science for Sustainable Action. And we'll give you a real insight into what we're planning for our next exhibition. I'll put up on the chat, but it's basically on Thursday at 1.15 Eastern time, 12.15 Central time and 10.15 Pacific time. Uh, the other thing to talk about is that we are now working in partnership with our local government on a brand new facility and a huge exhibit hall, which is under construction and directly opposite to Papa. 
Um, it has a major, uh, two major galleries. The first is 12,000 square feet and the second 18,000. So we can combine those to have a very major exhibition. It will have uh, exhibitions on display right through the year and we're looking for product. If you think your product's good, think like this. Would it encourage an Australian to do a getaway holiday to Australia? Because that's the criteria that we are examining all exhibitions on. We need it to be an Australasian premiere. Our next slot is July 2023, but we'll have ongoing slots. So do talk to me. My contact details should be up, uh, uh, on the screen. I see they're in black. You probably can't read them. I'll put them in the chat. I'll also put up for us details and we miss you all it would be very lovely to be able to come and see you thank you all bye bye okay uh troy uh, thank you uh, everyone time say on this virtual ile presentation i'm troy carlson with stage nine exhibits and uh, we currently have eight exhibits in our portfolio with recent or upcoming openings at Rochester Museum and Science Center with Expedition Dinosaur, Grand Rapids Public Museum with Popnology, Springs Preserve with Toytopia, and Bishop Museum with Expedition Dinosaur, Rise of the Mammals. Next slide. Want to formally induce, introduce our newest exhibit, Expedition Dinosaur, Rise of the Mammals. Next slide. Uh, next slide. Um, actually go back one. There's maybe one missing here. Okay, um, I'll just go ahead here. Uh, our content partner on this project is famed paleontologist and expert on early mammals, Tom Williamson. Tom is a vertebrate paleontologist who focused on the Late Cretaceous at New Mexico Museum of Natural History and Science. This project was very close to Tom as this exhibit highlights much of the work of his findings on unraveling the story of the early mammals. Uh, next slide. This exhibit is our second act and continues the story where our original expedition dinosaur left off. At the end of the Cretaceous period, the best known dinosaurs were flourishing until the asteroid struck Earth and changed everything for good. Not only did this bring about the end of the dinosaurs, but allowed for the amazing evolution of mammals. Next slide. Rise of the Mammals is our latest in our company's storytelling, which includes the finest animatronic dinosaurs, uh, animatronic mammals, rich storytelling, immersive environments, multiple and robust interactive artifacts and our first of its kind asteroid experience, a theater where guests could experience what that fateful moment was like if we could go back in time to experience it. Next slide. Rise of the Mammals was just installed at the Bishop Museum in Honolulu and held its debut opening this past weekend. We are currently accepting bookings for fall 2022 and I encourage everyone, uh, this is really fresh and unique content uh, to experience a stage nine exhibit, especially this one, as you'll see why so many venues who booked our first exhibit have booked it again. Thank you, everyone. I hope to see you in person at the next uh, conference. Okay, uh, Allison. Hi everybody, my name is Allison. I'm with Ingenium, Canada's Museum of Science and Innovation. Ingenium is located on the traditional and city territory of the Algonquin and Ashinaabi people in Ottawa. I am pleased to share with you the news of our latest traveling exhibition, which launched this summer at the Canada Agriculture and Food Museum, one of the three national science museums under Ingenium. Next please. Soil Superheroes introduces visitors to the League of Superheroes who live beneath our feet and make life on Earth possible. The exhibition uses a fleet of vibrant and spunky characters to talk directly to visitors. There's Wonder Worm, Captain Clay, Professor Leaf, and many more. The exhibit text is fun for children and adults alike. You may have noticed 
Supersand on the previous slide, Supersand is a member of Team Mineral, whose motto is Life's the Beach. The exhibition's primary audience is young children, but it shares the important message that human activities can either jeopardize the balance of or help soil ecosystems. Next, please. The Soil Superheroes exhibition comprises five modules, one central diorama, a hands-on discovery card for museum programming, and a supplementary projection experience. There are five mechanical interactives and three digital interactives and videos. The panels are bilingual, English-French, and could be converted into English-Spanish. The exhibition has many layout options and fits well in 1,200 to 1,500 square feet. It is available for booking starting summer 2022. Uh, next, please. Thank you to Ten and Ailee for this opportunity, and please don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions. Thanks. Bye. Okay, Jason. Hey, everyone. Uh, Jason Simmons here. Uh, happy to represent World Heritage Exhibitions. I believe my uh, associate Troy Collins is also on board here. Uh, we are also known as WHE, and we've expanded our portfolio to include two brand new experiences, as well as three established exhibitions, all of which combine stunning real artifacts with engaging storytelling. Next slide, please. Ramses the Great and the Gold of the Pharaohs transports visitors back 2,300 years to ancient Egypt to explore the life and accomplishments of Ramses II. Over 180 priceless artifacts showcase the workmanship of ancient Egypt. The exhibition will make its debut at the Houston Museum of Natural Science this November and does have some limited availability, so please reach out. Next slide. Machu Picchu and the Golden Empires of Peru examines the Andean societies that dominated South America for over 3,000 years. The exhibition features 192 objects, including one of the most impressive collections of gold to ever tour outside of Peru, and premieres this month at the Boca Raton Museum of Art. Next slide. WHE is now proud to represent some old friends, three world-class exhibitions with proven track records. Pompeii, the exhibition featuring nearly 200 artifacts, including eight body casts, tells the story of the destruction and preservation of the ancient Roman city, Pompeii. It's currently on display at the Carnegie Science Center in Pittsburgh. Mummies of the World explores the science behind the mummification process through one of the largest touring collections of mummies and related artifacts. Both have limited availability beginning in 22. Uh, next slide, please. Finally, we're welcoming back an old friend, Victoria the T-Rex, and she offers a rare opportunity to host one of the largest and most complete actual T-Rex fossils ever discovered. And yes, you do get the actual T-Rex if you host this exhibition. Next and final slide, please. All of these exhibitions have limited availability starting as early as 2022. We can typically offer little or no risk business models to our museum partners. I thank you for your time. All 120 of you still left on the call. Please reach out to me or my colleague, Troy Collins. Thank you. Okay, now Sarah. Hi, um, my name is Sarah Filzer. I don't know, can everybody hear me? Perfect. Um, I'm going to keep this short and sweet because we're nearing the end and I'm the third Sarah that you have heard from today. So um, I'm the education director at Exploration Works in Helena, Montana. We're a small science center in the capital city of Montana. And our newest ex exhibition built in partnership with um, Aaron Cleveland at Build for Impact is called Soar with Bats, an educational exploration of bats. Next slide, please. Um, the most exciting bit of Soar with Bats is that it is live bats. Um, and as you can see, they're pretty cute. They're little Seba short-tailed um, fruit bats. And they are, they get to be about four inches big and they're adorable. Uh, next slide, please. This exhibit is perfect for about 1,800 to 2,500 square feet. So those small museums out there, this is perfect for you. Um, it is great if you have a dark corner for the bats um, and just climate controlled indoor. Next slide, please. Um, target audience is those younger kids, ages two to 14, they have a blast. Um, and length of lease is about 12 weeks, but that is negotiable. Next slide, please. 
Uh, exhibit rental includes an educator guide and marketing kit with a promotional video that is amazing. Please go to build to buildforimpact.com slash bats to see that video. It's great. Um, next slide, please. And we have availability starting now for Soar with Bats. So please reach out to uh, info at explorationworks.org or I believe my email was sent out in there, Sarah F at explorationworks.org. And we will get you all hooked up with bats. Thank you. Okay, well now for the, the final presentation of uh, this, this uh, forum, Amber. Hi everyone, it's so nice to see you. Um, I'm Amber Stevenson from the Science Museum of Minnesota. You can go to the next slide. Our newest exhibit, Skin, Living Armor, Evolving Identity, just hit the road and it will be opening in Miami actually this weekend at the Frost Museum. Um, this exhibit aims to inspire wonder and curiosity about this uniquely complex organ, illustrate the incredibly adaptive properties of skin across all organisms, and spark dialogue and reflection about skin's role in shaping human culture and identity. There are tactile experiences, thought-provoking videos, and dozens of rarely seen specimens from world-class research collections. The tour is filling up quickly, so please reach out during the conference if you'd, want, if you'd like more info to reserve your spot. Next slide, please. And then coming soon is um, Nature All Around Us. It's set to open at our museum in Minnesota in October of 2022, and then avail availability start February of 2023. This exhibit challenges the notion that urban and natural environments are at odds by showing the many ways that they're linked and encouraging further curiosity and learning about planning, designing, and managing to, to nurture nature in our own communities. Visitors discover the hidden worlds and ri rich ecosystems within familiar places and explore the ways our daily lives are intertwined with nature, how trees cool our neighborhoods, how streams carry stormwater away from our homes, and how spending time in nearby nature keeps us healthy. Please let me know if you're interested in more information on this. Next slide, please. We have four other tours. Um, please reach out if you're ready to book out your schedule if you'd like to take a look at Ultimate Dinosaurs, Journey to Space, or Mental Health Mind Matters. We also have uh, Maya Hidden Worlds Revealed, which will be on tour through the end of 2022. And we're considering making a smaller version of this exhibit. Many of our exhibits range in size from 5,000 to 10,000 square feet. So please let me know if you'd, if you'd be interested in a smaller version of this exhibit. And then one last note, we offer master planning, um, development and design services. If you're ever in need of a, another seasoned um, expert museum to complement your team, please be in touch with us. Okay, well, thank you all. I think we just had a uh, very nice, almost two hours of excitement, let's put it that way. But uh, Cynthia or uh, who, who's, who's going to now sum this up in terms of the uh, availability of the materials? Yeah, yeah, thank you, Mac. Um, Thank you so much to our presenters and all of our participants. We will send out all of hey, the Cynthia, slides. Cynthia, do you want to turn the screen share off as you wrap up here? Sorry, we're still seeing Amber Stevenson. Sure. Now we can see you. There we go. Sorry to boot you off there, Nat. <laughs> Um, yeah, so thank you so much to all of our presenters and participants. Thank you so, so much to Natalie Doss, um, Christy, and Heather Birchall um, for helping us out to make this possible, as well as everyone who's on the 10 board, as well as um, the folks over at ILE. Um, we will package everything up and send it out. So all of the slides that you saw today, as well as the presenters, if you saw something that you like or you have questions about, please reach out to everyone. Um, I know that everyone is uh, definitely missing all of our museum friends. So um, yeah, thank you so much. Um, we'll stay on here for just a little bit if um, if folks want to say hi or if you want to connect um, and share contact info. Otherwise, we hope to see you soon. Debbie, I see you posted our LinkedIn group. So make sure everyone um, joins that LinkedIn group to stay up to date with uh, the latest news and events. Thanks so much. <laughs>